Continuing in my series of recording technique videos, this is from my pro drum recording techniques video. One thing concerning this is that people talked about in the original video about the overhead mics, the type of overhead mics. Now, any overhead mics can work, any stereo pair be condensers, small diaphragms. These happen to be large diaphragm tube condensers, but you can really use anything. And the mic placements will be roughly about the same. So here it is. On the overheads, we have U47s as a spaced pair. They're pretty much equally distant in height from the snare drum. The snare drum is close to being in the center of the image, but not exactly. It's pretty much like it actually looks behind the drum kit. On the kick drum, the outer kick drum mic is a Wonder U47 FET mic. And on the inside, pointing slightly at an angle to the head, is an Electro Voice RE20. On the toms, we have a single Sennheiser MD421, placed just a couple inches above each of the toms. That's the rack tom. Let me come around to the floor tom. As you can see, they're just placed a couple inches above. On the snare, I'm using two transformerless SM57s. They've been modified. I got them at Zen Pro Audio by my good friend Warren Dent. I like transformerless 57s because they have a little bit more bottom end. This is really subtle stuff that people like me notice, but most people probably wouldn't notice. So you can use a regular 57. Anyway, so the distance, I'm going to go to this video here. Distance is about three finger widths away from the snare on the top. And the same thing with the bottom mic is about the same distance away from the bottom head of the snare. You want to have the mics the same distance away and you want to flip the polarity on one or the other mic depending on what they sound like in the overheads. Before we go any further, I want to talk about the phase relationships between the microphones. Because you have microphones placed at different distances from the drums and you have all these open microphones, the time delay, for example, from the snare to the overheads is different than the time delay of the snare to the kick drum because you're going to get some bleed in these microphones. The microphone in front of the kick is not only going to pick up that, but it's going to pick up the toms. It's going to pick up the snare. So all these relationships need to be balanced. Let's head over to the whiteboard for a really quick discussion on what phase is. To begin, we need to actually look at the components of a sound wave. So I drew out a sine wave here. The amplitude is how far above or below the center line is. That's X axis, which is the, uh, time. The peak of the sound wave above the X axis is called the crest and the lowest point is called the trough. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so the amplitude is the distance above or below the center line, and the frequency is the number of cycles per second. Now, to go one cycle here, for example, from here to here, that's, that, that is wavelength. It really can be anywhere. That is the wave length. But you can measure it in GTH, there we go. Or you can go from here to here. That is one complete cycle through the waveform where it goes above it, below it, and back to the x-axis again. The most important thing you need to know about phase is when you have a particular source like a kick drum, bass drum, that has two mics on it or a snare drum or a tom, that those mics are in phase with each other which usually involves flipping the polarity on one of the mics. And then the phase relationship between those mics and the overheads. Here's a little clip from a video I did about two years ago on phase. I do a quick demonstration of what close mic'd in and out of phase drums sound like. Let's check it out. Okay, I wanna hear the snare now. Now I'm gonna flip the phase on the snare bottom. Okay, again. It's very obvious when the snare is out of phase, it sounds incredibly thin. Next, let's go into Pro Tools and see what the waveforms look like when it's in phase versus out of phase. Okay, here's the snare top, and this is the snare bottom. See how they're perfectly in phase. The crests are happening right at the same time. You know, this is, once again, this is time, time delayed a little bit because you, you have the width of the snare, or the depth, however you want to think of it. So it's going to be a few, you know, it's going to be a few samples behind it here. If I had to look at it, it's 12 samples behind. That's how long it takes for that for it to get from one mic to the next. So if I move to my 
out of phase sample, you're going to notice once again that they are perfectly out of phase here. You have a crest there, you have a trough there. This waveform actually goes down as a trough first because it's moving away from the microphone, okay? And the air is moving towards the microphone there. That is an out of phase snare. Let me talk about the mic pre's that we're using for the drums. We're using all these Neve style mic pre's. These are all BAE. Two of these are 1066s, two are 1073s, two are 1032s, which is a 1073 with an expanded mid range that BAE makes. And I also have these Neve 1081s down here. The only other extra mic pre is a is an Electrodyne 501 that I'm using for the hi-hat. Now, I'm using the onboard EQs here, except for the kick out. I'll talk about that in a second. So in the kick in, the only thing that's being taken out on the EQ is some 360 hertz. That takes out the boxiness. The kick out is being routed over here to this 560 API uh, graphic EQ, and I'm dumping out 500 and 250 hertz to once again take out the boxiness of it. It's just gonna give it a tighter sound and take out some of the muddiness. Uh, the snare top is going through a Neve 1066. The snare bottom is going through the 1073. The, on, the, on the snare top, I'm adding some 7K, which gives me the sound of the snare wires. Adding a little bit of 220 to give it a little bit of bottom end on the snare top. Snare bottom, the polarity is reversed, so it sounds like it's in phase with each other. The overheads, which have the U47s, are going through these uh, 1032s. And then the toms are going through the Neve 1081s. They have a little bit of EQ on them, taking out a little bit of mid-range, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. Next, we're gonna have Jack play a couple different beats. Now, what I've done is I've balanced all the mics into a mix that sounds good to me. So I've taken it, there's no EQ, there is no compression, nothing on the drums. This is the straight drum sound. With the EQs that I just talked about, the couple little things that I did, Single mic toms, double mic snare, double mic kick. Let's check it out. All right, let me play that same take. Now I've got no effects on anything here there's no nothing on the sense there's no eq this is just the balance that i came up with i'm going to isolate the individual instruments and show you what they look like and what they sound like soloed here we go Let's look at the kick drum. I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see what the phase looks like. See how the two humps are in phase with each other here? They go up here, they go down here. This one's a little bit behind. Now, a lot of people will drag these things over to make them in phase like this. Don't do that, you don't need to do that. It's, it's close enough there. It's, it, if it sounds good, it is good. Next, I'm gonna have Jack play a mid-tempo groove. Let's check it out. Let's check that groove out in Pro Tools. That kick out really makes that kick drum sound huge and puffy. Next, we're gonna do a third groove at a faster tempo. Let's check it out. Let's check that take out in Pro Tools. You 
guys know from watching my videos, I like all different miking techniques. I just did a video on the Glenn Johns four mic or three mic technique. This is more of a modern drum recording approach, what we've been doing in this video. Now, many times you have the bass drum and snare drum double mic'd. I like to have on the snare drum many times to have two mics on the top of the snare and one mic on the bottom, I guess triple mic'd. I'll have a 57 along with a small diaphragm condenser mic. Here's a mic clip that actually holds the two mics, the SM57 and the AKG451. As you can see, the capsules are right next to each other, so the phase will be dead on. Another thing I like to do is to double mic the toms. Let me show you that. On the top of the tom, I have an AKG414 facing the center of the drum, and then on the bottom of the tom is a Sennheiser MD 421, about the same distance away. Same thing on the floor tom. So on the top of the floor tom, I have the AKG 414. And on the bottom, way down here, I have the Sennheiser 421. Let's check that out. Let's check that take out in Pro Tools. I'll solo the top and bottom mics on the tom so you can actually hear what they sound like isolated. Let's just take a look at those toms by themselves, the top and bottom. Let's look at the rack here. Play this. Solo it. Here's with the top. When I add the bottom, let me play the bottom by itself, then together. If I zoom in, you can see that they're perfectly in phase with each other. See here, perfectly lined up. I mean, not perfectly, I could move it, but you don't wanna do that. It's always gonna be delayed a little bit, right? Just it's time traveling here. Let me loop a single hit and I'll turn the rack bottom on and off. Here we go. way bigger with that bottom end. Just sounds much fuller with no EQ or anything. Let's do the floor tom here. First of all, let's look at the floor tom. I'm gonna zoom in once again. Oops. So here we go, let's look here. You can see they're perfectly in phase with each other. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Here's the floor tom by itself. It sounds good by itself. Here, here it is with the floor bottom. Here's the floor bottom by itself. See how much tone there is? Listen to the single hit. Let me loop it so you can hear, hear it with and without. When I add that bottom mic in, yeah, it does get louder, but it gets fatter. You can hear the entire roundness of the drum it sounds like the drum like you're hearing both sides because you are that's all for now don't forget to subscribe ring the bell and leave a comment check out my new quick lessons pro guitar course that just came out also the beato book if you want to learn about music theory that's how you do it and check out my beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com and don't forget if you want to support the channel even more think about becoming a member of the beato club thanks so much for watching. Oh,